Dun, dun, dun. Here we are at day two, day two of trying to learn Django. Day two of Eli the computer guy whining to his mommy. Mommy, why, why don't we just keep using PHP? PHP is so nice and powerful and easy compared to this horse crap. But anyways, we're not just gonna keep using PHP because that's what lame people do. And well, I am lame, <laughs> I am lame. But anyways, right? Silicon Dojo, the idea is we learn new technologies, we create a new class for technologies, we teach people how to use the technology and move. then we move the hell on. And apparently people are really excited about Django for, for some reason. So I'm going through all the pain, all the pain of learning Django. Uh, so anyways, uh, just so you know, if you're gonna be learning Django, uh, W3 schools, W3 schools, uh, way to go. Uh, yesterday, I was actually using the Django website. So Django is an open source project. They have their own tutorials. Holy crap, those are a pain in the ass. Um, when in doubt, go to W3 Schools. I've just been following along with W3 Schools today, and I, I, have created, I have created this little app so far. I have a little tennis club members app. Look at this. This is all Django. Uh, so basically, this is all Python, just so you understand. Uh, there's no Apache on here. There's no Nginx, nothing like that. Uh, I think you're basically just using the built-in Python web server. Uh, so this is being presented simply with Python. It's actually uh, being presented um, from my home directory, not even www or slash var or anything like that. Uh, it's just my home directory. Uh, Basically, when you set it up, uh, it looks to, uh, basically, it, it um, listens on a certain port, uh, port 8000. If somebody try to, tries to connect on that port, um, it runs through and gives you the code. Uh, so we look at this. We have my tennis club. Uh, you can check out all the members. It shows me all the members of my tennis club. And then I can go and click on, let's say, Frank Rogers. And it can give me Frank Rogers' a telephone number uh, and how long they've been a, a member by. And you go back and click on Emil, uh, phone number, right? And so basically we have a crappy little app here. Uh, so all of this is being run off of a database back in. Again, I think one of the reasons why the young kids uh, like um, Django is it actually comes with, I think it's called SQLite, SQ light, something like that. Comes with a, a, a lightweight uh, SQL database. Uh, when I say lightweight though, it just means it doesn't have all the features apparently as like something like MySQL. Um, it's actually pretty uh, pretty powerful. Uh, supposedly, 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 if you have enough resources, uh, you can store up to like 250 terabytes, terabytes of data into this crappy little database. Uh, so that's the thing with this. Uh, so the, the web server is built in, the database is built in, uh, then you just have to learn the, the coding language and figure it out. I think that's why a lot of people like this because you don't need to know very much about sysadmin, right? You don't have to know about how to, uh, you know, change mod. You don't need to, have, need to know how to um, do uh, uh, Linux permissions. Uh, you don't have to understand how to install Apache. You don't have to understand, basically if you understand Python, and then you learn this mess, uh, you can get it going. Uh, okay, so that's that's basically what the app looks like. If we go up here, um, oh, it gets so confusing. Uh, let's see here, we have models, we have models. Okay, so this is the schema, this is the schema uh, for that SQLite database, right? So for this, um, I have basically a member, essentially a member table, first name, models, char field, max length 255, last name, max length 255, Font, it's an integer, uh, it can be null. Uh, join a date is a date field, can be null. Um, and so basically, <clears throat> this is what defines the schema. Uh, now, again, this is where it gets to be a pain in the ass with Drupal or uh, with Django. Drupal's also a pain in the ass. But, anyways, Django. So you create this. Then, once you create this at the command line, you run this like migrate tool, and then it will take this. And then actually write all the SQL and send that to the database to create your tables. Uh, then beyond that, at least as far as I am with W3 Schools, currently in order to add uh, records to the database, you actually have to use um, the Python shell. <laughs> That's fun. 
<laughs> Anyways, I miss the SQL command line. Uh, so, so yeah, so you basically, you use the, the Python shell to then add records, and that's how you actually, at least at this point, that's how you add all of these records. Um, I have to say, if, if I have a choice between actual SQL or Python command line, I <laughs> will take SQL any bloody day of the week. But anyways, I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay, so, so how does this work? See, see, look at me. See, I'm a good little geek. I'm a good little geek. I'm trying to draw all this stuff out, right? So, okay, so basically when you go to home, right? So when we start going to links here, this is dealt with through the urls.py file. So there's two urls.py files. There is the main one. So for Django itself, there's a main one. And so we can see path admin. Uh, basically, this is going to take us to the admin page for the site, right? So admin, that takes us to the admin page. But then one of the things you'll see here is an include. So not only is this the admin, but it also wants us to include the members dot urls python file so if we go here that's where we get these other pages that are showing up so if you go to members you then go to view i'll show you in a second but so it's so this is for members uh, members details and testing right so if i am here you'll see members right and this is here and so basically, if you plug in members, it's going to basically redirect you to views.members. Views is the next file, right? Um, if we do testing, right? So testing, testing, this comes up. So again, so if we look here, so testing, right? So this is what deals with the URLs. And basically this is this says where to go for information about the URLs. So that's where you go to the views. That's where you go to the views.py, oh crikey, uh, dot file. And so here, uh, what we're going to see is basically functions, define members, define details, define main, define testing, what we just did. Um, Members request, right? Um, so basically, um, with this, it's uh, the, the members app, the request that comes in. Uh, here, what we're going to do is, um, let's see, so members, members. Uh, let's see. So members, so members, right? So define members. So members, so members, Jesus Christ. Okay, so members. When you do members, that's going to send you to view.members. View.members is this, all right? So we're going to import them from models. Basically, we're going to import that member database that's been created. My members, we're going to create a list that equals member, objects all, and the values. So that's all going to come in. And then we're going to use a template. So a template, uh, isn't that how you kind of print this stuff out? You have the all members template here. You have like block title and members. And basically you list, you list through 4x in my members, right? So when we create this list here, this is going to be a list. So for all, everything that's in my members, uh, we're basically going to print out an href, a hyperlink, and then the first name, last name. So first name, last name, and as I showed you, it's a hyperlink. Uh, the hyperlink is to details with the ID number of the user. So Len Rufus goes to details for, which is Len Rufus with this different information. Uh, right, uh, so basically my members, uh, so it queries the database, gets all those values, dumps it into a list. And then, you ask, and then you want to have a template file so it can get printed out. So we're going to use this function to go grab that uh, all members.html template. Uh, context, so my members, so this is a list. My members list is going to equal this, this my members that came from the database. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return the template. We're going to render the context. So the context equals my members, right? That list. So we're going to um, template render with that. So all of that then goes here. 
And then when that goes here, that gets us this. <laughs> oh, golly. My mommy, uh, my mommy, my brain hurts. And so that's where you can go through here. And again, we see the details. So we click on the details. Uh, main, so main is simply this. So if you don't have anything, basically this is the root, the root of the uh, the web application. That's main. Uh, so loader. So this is loader git template main.html template. We go take a look at the main.html template. Basically we see my tennis club members. Check out all of our members at the members hyperlink. My tennis club members. Check out all members at the hyperlink. You'll then notice that this extends master.html. So this is a template file that you're allowed able to plug things in, right? So uh, let's see. Um, oh, uh, where are details? So let's do say details, right? So okay, so this is this is a template file where you're able to plug things in, right? My member dot first name, my member dot last name, phone number, right? But but this can then be within another template file, so master.html. So basically master.html is this, and that's where you can set the document type, the HTML. You can create the title, but you'll notice the title is kind of like this variable thing, block title. So that will fill in the title that you give, end block. Then you get to the body, block content, end block. And so we go here to details. Um, what we can see here is block title, details about my member, first name, last name. Uh, so we go down here, oops, go down here, right? Details about, type, uh, whatever, Tobias Rufus. So that is there, and then that gets plugged into the master there for the actual uh, title, right? Then down here, block content, right? Block content, that is here, right? Uh, um, and then you do H1, uh, my member first name, my member last name, H1, first name, last time, name, phone number, member sense, back, phone number, member sense, back. Oh, cracky. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, uh, then beyond that, uh, we have the back end. Uh, so this is one of the things. Um <clears throat> So you have these essentially, I guess essentially they're database tables as far as I've been able to gather. So when you start out, you only have groups and users. Uh, then you can add, so I created this members application. So members application has its own database table. And so with Django, you also get this graphical backend so that you can see all of the values and all of the information in your database in a graphical environment and it's built in. Uh, so the web server is built in, the database is built in, the the graphical backend is built in. You know, it's easy. It's so easy as long as you're willing to figure out what the frick this means. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, so this is day two, day two of learning Django, and um, <laughs> I guess if you're starting out. Can I be honest with you? Okay, let's, let's put the snark aside. Let's put the snark aside. If you are completely starting out in the technology world, you don't really have any understanding of sysadmin work. You don't really have understanding of networking. You don't have a lot of the other understanding. You just want to build an app. I do have to say, I think the... <laughs> Frick me. Frick me for saying this. I do believe the learning curve on this is probably faster for people that don't know how to use Linux at the command line. Like if you're just starting out, you're truly just starting out and you want to build a web application. Okay, I'll give it. I'll give it to you. This is probably a faster learning curve to learn a web application. Because again, if, you, if you're gonna learn a LAMP stack, right? To learn a LAMP stack, you gotta learn Linux, you gotta learn Apache to, to whatever degree. Yeah, you gotta learn MySQL, right? And then you gotta learn PHP or whatever, the programming language. Uh, so again, those are, you get so used to it after a while, you just know how to use Linux or whatever else. But again, for somebody that's new, that's new, um, that can be a little bit daunting. So I think, 
I think that's that's a value here. I do have to say, from a security standpoint, from a security standpoint, this probably is more secure, right? Because you're not you're not dealing with a, a Apache, right? So with, with Apache, um, basically you're you're dealing with the file structure of the computer, right? So you have to give the appropriate permissions for the HTML folder. You have to give appropriate permissions uh, for different files and directories when you create your web app. You can obviously screw that up. And so since this is all literally just being delivered as code, this is processing it and pumping it to you, the user doesn't actually get to really touch those files in any way. Um, so that's, that's probably a better thing from a security standpoint. Um, but my golly, <laughs> giving me a Giving this geek a damn headache. So anyways, but we're going to keep playing. Uh, a lot of people like Django. So again, uh, people are asking why Why am I doing Django um, instead of like Laravel? So if I'm dealing with frameworks, why am I dealing with Django instead of Laravel? Again, do remember what my job is. My job is to be an educator. Again, to be crystal clear, I am egotistical as hell. I've got a big ego and I cannot lie. Um, uh, but I'm not arrogant, actually. To be clear, I'm not arrogant. And so a lot of people, a lot of very snotty coders have told me that PHP is a garbage and I should be learning using something modern. So what I'm doing here, <laughs> oh, God help me, is I'm using something a bit more modern. And so a lot of people like Django, and so I'm learning Django. I'm taking this week or whatever to learn Django. And then we'll see how I feel about it at the end of the day. Uh, that, that's why I'm doing this. Again, so, so like my idea is like maybe February or March, once I'm pretty comfortable with this, we can just do a one day, eight hour Django class. So then I can teach you Django. So you don't have to learn Django from these other people. <laughs> right. Um, and then the idea is after this, uh, probably do Node at some point. So Node is another super cool, fancy, amazing language. All the coders are like, you got to do Node, dude. And, you know, again, I'm egotistical, I'm not arrogant. Maybe Node, maybe Node is better. So we'll learn Node. And once we get done with that, I don't know, maybe after that we'll do Laravel or whatever. Again, I think that's a big thing to understand with being a technology professional. A lot of it is just learning. It's just learning. It's playing. Uh, sometimes you find out some things are amazing, right? You go, oh my golly, how did I never, how did I not know this exists? And then other things, you're just like, what the hell? Um, I am currently in the what the hell plateau. <laughs> As a, as, a, as a geek student, right? There's the, ooh, this is exciting. And then you get to the what the hell plateau. And then maybe on the other, maybe on the other side of the what the hell plateau, you actually figure out what the hell you're doing. Or you go on to the next thing. So anyways, um, this is day two of Django. Uh, do remember to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. YouTube does not care about the quality of our relationship. Just that you're willing to give me a response. Leave a comment, please. Uh, try to subscribe if you want to subscribe. Uh, and with that, I will see you all later.